Okay, we're going to do the uh, Famous American Railroad set number two, the Union Pacific. Um, if you watched my video on uh, the MPC steamers on parade, I went over this guy um, a little bit. Um, but uh, this came out in 1980. Uh, this was the first uh, use of the uh, Berkshire casting uh, since the post war period. Um, I need to get that to bend in there a little better. But uh, this is the first time they ever put elephant ears or smoke deflectors on a uh, locomotive. That's uh, pretty colorful. It, uh, pretty good runner. Uh, the only issue with these, and you kind of see it on the stack a little bit there, is the uh, the colors on these, the paint. Move forward a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell on a video or on a picture, but um, the paint they used on these for some reason will dull out really bad and kind of get a little yellowish. Um, a real easy way to tell on these is for some reason the paint on these doesn't get affected, but this does, so you can easily tell um, when there's a uh, shade variance. On mine, the, the smokestack really gives it away. Um, just about all of these have that. Uh, you can't really avoid it. Um, it has something to do with these being... Um, Subjected to a little bit of excess heat or something, which I mean almost everybody's put these in storage somewhere at some point You know even just shipping them I think is enough to do it. So it's just not something you're gonna avoid unfortunately, so uh, Every once in a while you'll see one that is pristine and they are pretty sharp looking when they're not kind of doled out like that But it you know, it's just uh, unfortunately something that happens with these um other than that, just absolutely exactly what you'd expect from a Burke. Um, 1980, though, was kind of a big year uh, for Lionel uh, as far as putting out steam sets because this set came out and then the uh, Chessie Steam Special came out, both of them use, utilizing the Berkshire, which technically the uh, Chessie Steam Special should have been a uh, Northern, not a Burke, but regardless, uh, it's still a sharp looking locomotive and uh, this one here, I think, is pretty sharp. I actually usually uh, run it uh, in front of the, uh, oh, what year were those out? Uh, I think it was 83. Yeah, I think it might have been 83. They came out with a UP um, aluminum uh, passenger set, uh, the Overland. Uh, it came with uh, diesels. Uh, I picked up a set of the cars, and I actually run it behind this. And uh, I got to say, I think it's actually pretty sharp looking. I'll uh, be doing a video on those cars, and then you'll see this running it eventually. But uh, go ahead and move on here. Uh, 8002 is the number. Uh, this is before Lionel stopped doing that and switched over to using more prototypical numbers. But uh, as you can see, there's the little number two uh, symbol. Uh, just your standard streamlined tender, which uh, isn't too prototypical for UP. It should have been more of a square one. Um, of course, UP also didn't run Burks either, from my understanding, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the first car up, and let me move the camera a little bit so I can get a little more square on this guy, so it's not kind of weird looking, is the Union Pacific uh, boxcar. Um, I'm actually pretty fond of this boxcar. I think it's pretty sharp looking. But it's just your average plain uh, UP boxcar, nothing too special. Um, utilizes the same trucks like everything else. Um, just the way I know it was at the time. Uh, the next item in the set, which is not focusing at all, is not liking that yellow. Let's see if I can get my hand in there. Catch it. No? Try backing up a little bit. No? Hmm, okay, you just do not want to focus in on that guy. There we go. Some reason City Hall is throwing it off. Uh, anyways, uh, this was lettered up for the Pacific Fruit Express. And also, a little tidbit, unless I'm mistaken, I think this is the only time a uh, other railroad was ever uh, mentioned on any of these cars. Is with that Southern Pacific Lines logo there on the uh, Pacific Fruit Express car, which for some reason has gone back out of focus again. But, um, otherwise than that, nothing too spectacular with that. I do think it's a sharp-looking car, and I'm pretty fond of it. And then next comes up the tank car, which, you know, if you're familiar with these, you won't be 
too shocked with the revelation of these guys. Focusing on that a little bit. Not a bad car. Uh, something to watch out on these UP ones is the sticker on these. For some reason, they didn't use a very good adhesive or enough adhesive or something. And they'll peel like that. Um, I need to get some super glue and stick it back on the top and the bottom at some point. But both sides are like that. Uh, the Great Northern um, tank car will do that one also on occasion. But not as bad as this one. As far as I'm aware, I don't think the Santa Fe car has that issue. So, just something to watch out for on those. And unfortunately, from what I understand, it's not really uh, something you can necessarily avoid with them. It just kind of happens. But it is what it is. Next, we'll come up to the uh, UP uh, Hopper car. Uh, let's see here. Let me go zoom back out on that guy. Just your uh, typical uh, Lionel covered hopper. Nothing too special. Um, a little bit more of a pro typical approach to the coloring on this one instead of the bright red. And then the uh, big special car for this set. Let me zoom out and go up a little bit again. Is the uh, Union Pacific piggyback car. This was the special car put out later that you had to pick up as an extra. Um, not not too awfully rare. Uh, you can find these without too much trouble. Uh, not really any more expensive than the other cars, but just kind of notable because it's the only uh, piggyback car out of the whole set. Uh, same way with like the crane car for the Santa Fe I didn't pick up. That's the only one you'll, you'll catch on that one. And then finally, we come to the... Bay Window Union Pacific Caboose, which I think is a pretty sharp looking caboose. Works pretty well. And we will kind of slide this way. Let me grab the catalogs. People do enjoy looking at these. But we got the uh, 1980 Lionel Trains catalog. And there she is. There's this cover. Big deal with this one, of course, was the electronic whistle was back after not appearing for a little while. But there she is. The Burke was back. And just a quick glimpse I'll give you. Which we ain't going over this set today, but there's the uh, there was the other use of the Burke that year with the uh, Chessie Steam Special. As you can see, they were really pushing that electronic whistle being back. And then, this here was the uh, 1984 uh, Collector Center uh, little pamphlet. Um, and with this one, advertising a couple specialty cars you could get. And there it is, the uh, piggyback flat car with vans. This was the way to get it. Which, if you don't know how these worked, I never actually showed the back of these. But basically, they'd want the dealers to order these big sets. Of merchandise you know you get all these special cars and whatnot and they want you to order this whole thing in and um, sometimes they would hook you up a little bit more if you'd buy a bunch of bulk track and switches and things like that uh, you can find all kinds of weird stuff in these um, collector things sometimes because sometimes they try to get dealers to buy um, like uh, mirrors and all kinds of kind of the goofy goofy stuff so but uh, that's how they were doing things at the time. So that wraps up um, the Famous American Roads set number two, the Union Pacific.